Okie dokie. So first off, we're actually going to start by looking at an exam question. OK, this is a six mark question from GCSE about three years ago. And so it is one from the old spec, but it is a good one. So it says um, it gives you two examples of the Earth um, before and after almost. So this on the left hand side is the early Earth and it's covered in volcanoes. It says most of the atmosphere was carbon dioxide and water vapor, whereas the Earth today, most of the Earth is covered in water, covered in the oceans, um, and most of the atmosphere is nitrogen and oxygen. When you're given a question like this, a six marker, best thing to do is try and break it up into different chunks. So it's wanting us to describe, so maybe like identify some differences, and explain so why those differences have happened that they have changed from this to this so the big differences that we've got there is we've got lots of carbon dioxide here and lots of water vapor here whereas in here we've got water as a liquid very little carbon dioxide and lots of water. So what might be really good to do, if we're trying to structure an answer for this, we need to talk about how the carbon dioxide went from a lot to a little. So the carbon dioxide woo, decreased. You're welcome, this is my best handwriting. The carbon dioxide decreased and explain why. The water went from a gas, so water vapour, here, to oceans, here. So it went from a gas to a liquid. And why? And then over here, there is oxygen. Sorry, there is no oxygen in this one, but there's lots of oxygen in this one. So if we identified those three big changes and tried to explain why that happened, that would probably get us all six marks. I've not really mentioned at this point the nitrogen. Um, nitrogen we don't often talk about in GCSE chemistry. We cover it in more detail in A-level chemistry and it might be mentioned in GCSE biology at higher levels, um, but we don't need to worry too much about nitrogen at this point. OK, so we need an explanation to go with that. Why did the CO2 decrease? Why did the water change from a gas to a liquid? And why did oxygen increase? OK, so as we said, the significant changes were the quantity of CO2 decreasing. So we could go for the volume of CO2 decrease, the concentration, uh, the percentage, either of those words, uh, any of those words would be absolutely great. The amount, as you all know, that's my pet hate. I hate the word amount because it covers too many different things. I don't like it. Examiners don't like it. OK, so volume of CO2 decreased or percentage or abundance is even a really cool word as well. So why might the carbon dioxide have decreased? Well, in the first lesson of this unit, we said that whatever is in the air is also in the water. So carbon dioxide dissolved into bodies of water, so oceans, rivers, streams, lakes, those sorts of things. I'm just going to go for the oceans. So therefore, that will have decreased the volume of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Other processes that use up carbon dioxide, a big famous one from biology, plants absorbed 
carbon dioxide. Now that's okay, but let's see if we can get it a bit more detailed. So to get high marks in these sorts of things, you've got to use scientific language, especially sort of names of processes. So if we just said plants absorb CO2, that's kind of okay. Absorbed is a good sciencey word, but we can go on better. Plants absorb carbon dioxide during the process we all love and adore. And to be honest, we'll be pretty screwed without it uh, during photosynthesis. And if you were feeling particularly hardcore, you could maybe even show an equation for that as well. That'd be really cool. So carbon dioxide dissolved into the oceans, plants absorb the CO2. Uh, and one of the way that we talked about um, that carbon dioxide is removed from the atmosphere is being locked up in sort of rocks or fossils. Um, so again, let's use that key terminology of being locked up. Um, CO2 became locked up during the formation of rocks, cooling of lava, um, during the fossilization processes. And um, there's a few different ways that you can put this. Uh, let's go for during the formation of sedimentary, I always spell that wrong, um, sedimentary, I believe that's right now, rocks and fossils. Okay, so there's three really cool ways uh, that the carbon dioxide concentration decreased in the atmosphere, which helps explain why it's gone from mostly carbon dioxide to not even being mentioned on this side. And it's not no carbon dioxide, but it's, it's very little. Okay, so that was one of the changes we need to talk about. The other one was water. On this first one, there was no water. Well, there was, but it was there as a, a gas. There was no liquid water. Um, and then here, there's lots of water. But here, there's lots of water. of water potentially stayed the same but water vapor turned into liquid. Why did that happen? That happened as we've discussed previously, because the earth started to cool. Once the earth was cooling, once the volcanic processes were sort of calming down a little bit and a lot of the heat had escaped out, uh, off into space, and then our atmosphere was formed, that started the cooling and eventually got cool enough where water could condense. Again, trying to get this idea of key words, condense would be a great way to put it, rather than just saying, turned into water, Let's change that to condensed, because that is a much more scientific word. So justification for this one, the earth began to cool. And so, and let's use some la -da words here. Gaseous or gaseous, depending on how la -da your pronunciation is there. So gaseous water condensed to form liquids or the oceans. Okay, they're the first two that we talked about. Uh, and the third one is mentioning the oxygen. That was a big change uh, from the original diagram. Let's have a look. Yep, so again, no oxygen is really mentioned over here to it being pretty darn important over there. So oxygen, which is O2, increased. 
Why did the O2 increase? Um, again, we can link this back to the biological process that we all know and love. The oxygen increased because it was a waste product of photosynthesis. So plants gave off O2 as a waste product of photosynthesis. Okay, so this was a six marker. We described the changes, so we said CO2 decrease, water vapour condense and oxygen increase, so describe, done. Explain, we've used scientific keywords, we've said photosynthesis, we've used locked up, sedimentary, condensed, absorbed, waste products. We've got some really cool scientific words and describe the processes in which that actually happens. So the cooling and the photosynthesis being some of those processes. So I think we've explained it too. Let's have a look at the mark scheme. OK, so this is what the examiners see when they uh, have the mark scheme for this question. As you can see, it's a bit of a big block of text to read, um, but what have we got here? Oxygen increases because plants and algae developed and use carbon dioxide for growth, producing oxygen, yes, and carbon dioxide also decreased because of this, yes. Carbon dioxide decreased because of the oceans forming and dissolving and absorbing carbon dioxide, yep, yeah, got that. It came locked up in sedimentary rocks, sometimes called carbonate rocks or fossil fuels. We had a sedimentary and fossil fuels and yay I did get my spelling right. Um, oceans formed because the water vapour cooled and the atmosphere condensed, yep yeah, great. The continents we don't do about, that is on the old spec so I deliberately didn't talk about continents um, but if you do geography uh, that might be a little bit useful, well a little bit interesting for you. And again volcanoes is no longer on the spec so we wouldn't need that one either. Bonus point, it talked about uh, nitrogen forming. I did say we don't have to cover this uh, and we don't. It's only on the A-level chemistry. It's not on the GCSE chemistry. But we did mention that ammonia was present um, and then we did talk about that nitrogen. We did talk about nitrogen a lot when you lot were asking questions about it. So actually, you might have been able to get that, um, but it wasn't necessary because if we have a look what the marks are actually given for here, um, if you just make some vague statements based on the diagram, you get one or two marks. For level two, we need a description of how one change occurred. For level three, descriptions of how at least two changes occurred. So in a six mark question, you are graded on what is called like a level scheme. Now this doesn't equate to the actual grades that you're going to get. Level one is not equivalent to grade one. OK, that just they call it one, two and three. They could have just easily called it A, B and C. It doesn't actually matter. But for each one, what you need to do is if you've met that criteria, but not use particularly good scientific words, you get the lower mark. If you've met that criteria and use la di da sciencey words, you get the second mark. This one only wants one change. For example, if you just talked about carbon dioxide going up and down and then maybe use the word uh, sedimentary or locked up, then you probably get the four marks. To get to the top level of answer here, um, you need two changes, how they occurred and la -di da language for that top mark. So actually, having a look at the answer that I sketched out here, now granted I've not used particularly good uh, like sentence structure, I've done sort of bullet points. Now it doesn't specify in this question that you're going to be assessed on the quality of written communication, so for argument's sake I don't necessarily need um, like strong paragraphing and things like that. The way I've laid it out covers it up quite easily, however it would really look better um, as maybe three little paragraphs, one for each factor there. So let's match that up to the criteria and see what level my answer would get. So one or two statements. Um, I've definitely got one or two statements. So that's and I've used scientific language. So I've definitely got mark number one and mark number two. Description of one change. I have got one, two, 
three changes here. So I've actually got more than what you need. You'd only really have to talk about two of those criteria, two of those factors. So either carbon dioxide and water, water and oxygen, whatever. Um, and of those that I've got, CO2 dissolved into the oceans, uh, carbon dioxide dissolved into the oceans. That's a description there. Plants absorbed CO2 during photosynthesis. Uh, yep, that's stated just there. Oxygen locked up in sedimentary rocks, carbonate rocks or fossil fuels. I've got sedimentary and fossil fuels, so yeah, that's well and truly covered. And then with water, oceans form because the water cooled and vapour condensed. So I've got that idea and I've got the scientific keywords there, so that boosts it up a little bit more. And talking about oxygen, it's just here. Oxygen increased because plants and algae developed and used carbon dioxide. Yeah, I've got that. So this answer here would most definitely get six marks in an exam situation because it has met all of those criteria. OK. All right, then, girls, boys and others, that is it for another day. Goodbye from me. Goodbye from Stormzy. Keep doing your chemistry work. Bye.